so my first question is that you said the term ecosystem services, the ecosystem services approach is more understandable to people. Is that based on just observations or any kind of market research? Or no, there have been market yeah. research. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and uh, in Spain, for instance, there have been several uh, surveys recently. Uh, mm -hmm. The interesting, from the perspective of this convention, is that uh, that uh, people recognize that uh, wetlands and forest uh, ecosystems uh, provide a lot of services, but there is also a, a general concept that the drylands do not really provide services, and, and even from people who live near the drylands or in the drylands in, uh, in Spain. Mm -hmm. And you said that the, your communication is one of your recommendations from your paper. Yes. And I'm wondering how much response that has had from the participants here have they a lot even several have referred to it today to my to my yeah. comments yesterday it's it's something that that uh, that i think people understand that that uh, that uh, we are not very good in communicating mm -hmm. and i think it, it's a may it's a general uh, issue also about about really understanding that communication is about the the uh, person you want to transmit your message to, mm -hmm. while information sharing is just you send it out, you make a press release, it's out there, and you. But 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 it's really uh, how to to uh, to formulate your thing so it it uh, it fits with with the uh, with uh, the one who is supposed to receive your message. Mm -hmm. And then my last question is: Are there examples of communication done by scientists? That, that you think is works well, like we do media trainings for journalists on the certification, but are there communications trainings for scientists? Would you think that works? And are there any examples of things that are, that we should think no, about? No, I don't. I, I think <laughs> one 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 thing that that many journalists uh, they're probably under tremendous pre pressure, and they know also what is easy. I I noticed I I was in this convention as uh, Wagaki said before it came into existence and. Uh, and I've been involved in the drylands for for, uh, for my whole life, I feel more or less. Uh, and one of my one of the, the uh, my concerns have been with this convention have been the lack of attention to drought. And I have made papers on it, and it has been something that I really have regretted that that most of the time is just referred to as the convention on desertification. Nobody talks about drought. And then when Canada. Uh, mm -hmm. left the convention and, and the news that the papers who really w came up with the first headlines about it was convention on drought Canada leaves the convention on drought which I was saying this is quite interesting but then I read who were they citing, they were citing some activists in Canada who, uh, who were interested in droughts and, and water issues and they have been very fast in, 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 in calling the, the journalists immediately, what do the journalists do they write the story they don't go, don't go out and say, what is this convention about? What is, uh, but they take her word, or they, because it was mainly one, one woman, and she has been very fast and, and very good. She, 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 she has been very efficient. So, so the problem is also that you, you, you need to be very careful when, when you talk to journalists also to let them know, do a little, do your homework a little. Mm -hmm. Check that, that, that uh, they get it right. Thank <laughs> you.